My lecture today will be topic uh, focus on intestinal fibrosis in IBD. And a little bit provocative subtitle is, do we have a chance to solve it? Uh, we know that intestinal fibrosis uh, appears in very different enteropathies, in colopathies, with a quite different pathophysiology and causes. We can, uh, we can observe uh, significant intestinal fibrosis in NSA, NSA uh, enteropathy and colopathy in patients uh, with uh, radiation enteropathy, with very special fibrosis in the mucosa and subepithelial layer, we can find out in collagenoscolitis, and sometimes in the dysmoplastic, dysmoplastic reaction in the gastrointestinal tumors, and as well as in patients with the familiar adenomatous polyposis, usually outside of intestine involved mesenterium, and the very special in the graft versus host disease. But intestinal fibrosis is very predominant picture and feature in IBD patients. We recognize that uh, 30 to 50% of patients suffering from Crohn disease uh, express with significant fibrosis and 5 to 10% patients with uh, ulcerative colitis. Uh, this is important that uh, this is a, a picture from the paper published a couple years ago uh, from cohort of American patients from Minnesota region including more than 300 Crohn's disease patients diagnosed uh, since uh, 1970 to 2004, and was uh, recognized that uh, at the time of diagnosis, most of them, 80% was inflammatory phenotype without, without stricturing or penetrating disease. Only 20% of patients with the Crohn's disease, with the one year of diagnosis, from diagnosis, expressed some uh, penetrating phenotype or stricturing phenotype. Another situation is over 20 years after the diagnosis. You can see that uh, still inflammatory lesions and inflammatory uh, phenotypes is only in 50% of them, and the 50% developed significant complications, including penetrating, uh, meaning intra-abdominal fistulation, or stricturing disease. And so from clinical point of view, we can differentiate intestinal stricturing uh, strictures in patients with the Crohn's disease to fibrotic, to f inflammatory, and combinatory, because uh, therapeutic approach is quite different. Because just fibrotic strictures, the fibrotic stenosis, only resection or uh, surgery or resection or structuroplasty is indicated. In inflammatory strictures, uh, intensive medicamentous therapy is a moment, armamentarium, immunosuppressive, and biological therapy. It's a problem, it's a, it's a most common, is most frequent in clinical practice is combinatory stricturing with the fibrosis plus inflammatory lesions. We can use in the clinical conditions, especially if obstruction symptomatology is present or not. We use biological markers, uh, CRP in the serum, especially in the Crohn's, and fecal carprotectin in, the, in both diseases, very helpful, and new imaging methods using magnetic resonance, ultrasonography, and CT scan to make differentiation from fibrosis to inflammatory lesions. And there's some new techni techniques, magnetization, um, MRI, or elastography using in the liver pathology as applied at the moment in clinical practice in, in uh, Crohn's disease patients. What about mechanisms of intestinal fibrosis in IBD, mostly in Crohn's disease patients? We still believe that uh, fibrosis induced due to chronic and restricted inflammatory local reaction in the small or large bowel induced that many mesenchymal cells, meaning myofibroblasts and smooth 
those muscle cells are converted to activated myofibroblasts, they are able to produce extracellular proteins, matrix proteins, induced fibrosis and strictures with the imbalance between degradation and production. This is a, uh, a formerly pathogenesis. Uh, there are many uh, mediators through the both TH1 in the uh, interferon gamma, uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha, TH17, and as, as well as it's most probably most important is TH2 produces the uh, transforming growing factor beta 1, is major predominant mediators, stimulated transversion mesenchymal cells, epithelial cells, endothelial cells to the cells producing collagen and fibrosis. You can see here that the results of this un uncontrolled production of uh, fibrosis and stressor matrix is uh, myofibroblast hypertrophy and proliferation and extracellular matrix overproduction. The means, the results of this, uh, is, is, this uh, is uh, stiff matrix production in the stiffness, in the rigidity of the uh, intestinal uh, wall. What about clinical consequences of uh, unrestricted fibrosis, fibrogenesis in IBD patients? It's a typical, typical case. Uh, it's a patient with a Crohn's disease involved small bowel. This is a rigidity and bowel thickness more than one centimeter due to fibrosis uh, like host pipe featuring is a typical findings in, in the small bowel uh, in the Crohn's disease patients. And the second aspect from clinical point of view is that the stenosis is very often associated with the penetrating. The penetrating feature because in the upper part of stenosis, deep ulcerations, fissural ulceration, and induced, uh, induced penetration and inflammatory lesions to mesenterium in abdominal cavity in retroperitoneal space. So this is a consequence from clinical point of view is uh, the results is uh, intestinal lumen structuring and the symptoms of, uh, uh, of obstruction. The one solution is only at the moment is a surgery, intestinal resection, as well as as a structuroplasty. In the ulcerative colitis patients are involved in five to ten percent of patients, mostly of those with chronic inflammatory mild to moderate lesions without a response to medicamentous therapy. This, you can see here this is a large bowel shortening. Luminal tubulization, a loss of hostile pattern of the large bowel, and the loss of uh, wall elasticity because high stiffness of the uh, large bowel wall. It's, a, it's induced from clinical point of view. It's a, from clinical terminology induced abdominal pain and diarrhea, sometimes a tenesmus, which are not associated, not caused by active inflammation, because the endoscopical picture is a normal, it's a remission, but still patients has uh, symptoms. It is a very uh, important clinical consequences. It is a new theory, has to, uh, what, we, uh, what we should do, how to solve this problem. This is a uh, hypothetical model of the cause of Crohn's disease. You can see here that it's a, uh, that, uh, this is a clinical symptomatology, uh, meaning uh, abdominal pain and the diarrhea, uh, showing this as the clinical terminology is a relapse, the flare of Crohn's disease. It's a, this one, it, this is a remission. But chronic uh, mild to moderate inflammatory lesions continue with a smoldering inflammation induced fibrosis in the stricture and induced uh, uh, over the years or months or years induced in, uh, surgery. The new concept is a treat to target. The treat to target concept, concept was uh, hypothesized or postulated by Jean-Fred Colombel a couple of years ago that in the those patients with the high risk of fibrosis and the complications, structuring and penetrating complications should be treated earlier by intensive 
medical uh, drugs, including uh, immunosuppressive and biologicals. And we believe that this concept will be solved in most patients uh, this long-term complications. The current uh, non-resection therapeutic possibilities which we have at the moment is one I mentioned before, the three to target selection of patients and the early, earlier uh, combined immunosuppressive and uh, biological therapy. The second might be endoscopical therapy, mostly the balloon dilation, especially those patients after surgery, illocecal surgery with the stenosis or anastomosis is very effective in more than two of third patients is effective. Avoid next surgery. And we, we applied the non-resective surgeries uh, including stricteroplasty, uh, for, for many years is, is performed uh, Heineke Mikulic stricteroplasty from the short, small bowel structuring, meaning longitudinal incision and transfer the suture. And the, for a little bit longer, uh, stenosis as a small bowel is applied Fini stricteroplasty for many, for many years. Uh, this is a very important for clinical practice because uh, we recognized that intestinal fibrosis is a dynamic process which is potential reversible. It's a very, very important, interesting observation was done many years ago, beginning of 90s, and the published by Victor Fazio. He was a fantastic uh, North American surgeon which applied uh, Fini or Heineken Mikulaj stricturoplasty, and his uh, legendary paper uh, depicted that after stricturoplasty, intestinal fibrosis at this site completely disappears, and recurrence in this site of stricturoplasty is very rare. It's a meaning that is a st the stricturing disease and fibrosis of large or especially small bowel is dynamic and potentially reversible process. Hypothetical sites for specific antifibrotic therapy, not inflammatory, but specific is depicted in the, the cartoon. You can see here that at the moment we are concentrated here to solve disseminate diminished chronic inflammation. The second one is a direct influence impact of uh, anti-fibrotic agents is not available at the moment, but in the future seems to be very helpful anti-integrine therapy is a focus on integrine which is expressed on the surface of myofibroblast alpha V beta-6 and stimulated uh, transforming growing uh, factor beta-1 is decreased. It may be potential for the future. This therapy is a specific target for uh, uh, intestinal fibrosis. What about endoscopy? A couple of years ago was published the very nice papers focused on the new endoscopic approaches and the new endoscopic techniques how to solve stenosis, especially in those after uh, illocecal resection with the ilocolonic anastomosis, or in patients after ilopouch anastomosis with the, with the fistulation and sinus tract in the ilopouch anastomosis was, uh, was uh, developed in the, in the Cleveland by, by Professor uh, uh, and uh, recently was uh, published. The name is a stricturetomy or sinusotomy. And uh, this is a, uh, the picture compare efficacy on balloon dilation, endoscopic balloon dilation, stenotic anastomosis, ilocolonic anastomosis. It's the upper part. You can see here this is the uncontrolled dissection due to pressure of the balloon. And the second uh, two is a stri stricture tome performed by knee knife. Uh, I would like to, to show you uh, in the clinical practice what uh, should be done in, in uh, our side in Prague, in the stricture tome. This is a to close 
uh, tight structuring ilocolonic anastomosis. It's a T knife. It, it's a, it's a, uh, cutting there. It's uh, not only mucosa but submucosa in the, in, in the smooth muscle here. And after that, they are applied uh, clips uh, to stop and the preventive to be preventive of the massive bleeding after that. Uh, this is a uh, maybe very very effective therapy, and uh, another advantage is a long time persistence. It's not need to repeat uh, second one or third one uh, strictotomy. This is uh, applied in the hemoclips after uh, after the cutting and the strictotomy in this in this side. Professor Boschen will come to Prague in the September. I warmly welcome you to, to my side because he will uh, perform this procedure in many patients there. Ladies and gentlemen, let me con conclude that uh, uncontrolled intestinal fibrosis, uh, which leads to uh, bowel obstruction, affects a lot of patients with the Crohn's. It's an unsolved problem. At least 50% of Crohn's disease, especially in the small bowel disease, this is a problem. It's a not, uh, is a significant, uh, not only in Crohn's, but in UC patients. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's a different from heart disease, a kidney, with a lung uh, fibrosis. At the moment, we are legs beyond these other disciplines. In internal medicine, there are no specific medicamentous antifibrotic therapy in our armamentarium. At this moment, we are able only apply it as a new therapeutic strategy called treat to target in the select specific subpopulation of patients to be treated with very combined, very aggressive therapy and tight monitoring of disease activity, not only based on only clinical symptomatology, also on the biological parameters and new imaging methods. It's very perspective at this moment, especially in the Crohn's disease, seems to be ultrasonography, perhaps ultrasonography, electro, uh, elastography. And new endoscopy uh, has been emerged in the last couple of years, and I believe that it will be uh, applied in clinical practice in the future. It's a many greetings from my, uh, from my side from Prague. It's, uh, my IBD team in Iskar. Thanks for your attention.